There is only one person that can supply all of your needs internally and externally, and that is God. Welcome to the Save the Girl Girl podcast, everybody. I am your host, Erica E. And for those who do not know me, welcome to your first luxury listening experience. It's just like walking into Chanel, but for your ears. And because of that, you deserve to be in VIP. And I know exactly the perfect place for you to do that. And that is going to savethegirlgirl.com, entering your email address, and you are going to get beautifully crafted VIP newsletters from me. In addition to that, in addition to this audio, I also do visuals as well. So be sure to follow Save the Good Girl on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, as well as YouTube. Shout out to all of my YouTube listeners. I do have YouTube shorts as well. And on social media, we are engaging. We are having fun. Anything that's positive and uplifting, I am putting everything on there. So I can't wait for us to connect there. It's always open for you, boo. So here's the thing. You are listening to a special edition of the Save the Girl Girl podcast called SOE. And SOE stands for Shot of Erica. Just like your shot of green juice, tequila, or espresso, it gets you exactly where you need to be in a short period of time. I do the exact same thing, but for your mind. This episode is no more than 20 minutes, so it's perfect for your quick break as you're getting ready, just relaxing, just chilling. You want something to listen to, and it just zaps you up there. You in the right spot, boo. So here is the thing, y'all. I love God. This podcast, and I've said this before, but I am a Christian-based girl. I love God. I believe in God. I respect other people and their beliefs, but for me, it's God. The universe, God made the universe. So I always like to really talk about him out loud. And this morning, I had such an urge to come on the mic and talk to y'all about just going back to him, like talking to him, like really talking to him because sometimes we fall off, you know, we fall off and we are living our lives and we are just going through the daily stresses of life. And there's so many things that happen unexpectedly. So many things are going on. We're trying to figure things out. We're being good people. People are mistreating us. They're using us. They're talking about us. You know, you got laid off. You know, you're going through things in your marriage. You're going through things with your kids, your friendships. Like it's just a lot. And that could really consume us. And I think sometimes we don't go back to who's actually going to blend it all together and make it make sense. And some people will talk to God and pray when things are going wrong. Like, oh my God, please help me. And I tend to be the opposite. Usually when I'm going through things, I don't talk to him as much. And I should, because in that moment is when I need him the most. And what I love about God is that if you fall off with God, there is never a perfect moment to come back. He is always ready for us. Like you can come to him whenever you want and he will always be there. So I find that a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us will wake up and it's like sometimes anxiety. Sometimes we're going straight to our phones. Sometimes we're going to our task, our calendars. It's always something to do. And sometimes we need to reset the mind. And what really helps me when I start to pray is doing the 369 method. The 369 method means you breathe in through your nose for three seconds, you hold it for six, and then you release it for nine. When you do that five times, it really does reset the mind to focus. And that's not just for prayer, that's for anything. Like doing the 369 method, y'all, it really helps. There was a book that I was reading and also my therapist mentioned this as well, but just to kind of help us calm our minds, help us just kind of cleanse it a bit. Because if you wake up watching social media and you're seeing what's happening in the news and you're seeing, oh, this person got pregnant, this person got married, this person, when you're seeing all of these messages, it can be a lot for the mind and then you go straight into the day. But I find that for me, it's hard for me to focus. So when I do the 369 method, it really helps me to be prepared to pray and to talk to God. And this morning I read my devotional and the devotional, it was, um, it was my prayer book and it was going into Psalm 34 verse 18. And it says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. And that really warmed me. I felt like God was hugging me reading that because I am brokenhearted. And sometimes I do feel like my spirit is crushed. And sometimes I don't feel like I can 
physically talk to any human. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't feel like sometimes expressing myself, not saying that I can't, but I just don't feel like expressing what I'm really feeling. And only God really knows what's really going on with me. So why am I not talking to him? Why is he not the first son of defense? Why do I put him last? And the fact that even with me saying this and doing this, the fact that he still is like right there waiting for me and never left me, even in the midst of what I'm going through is amazing. Like it brings me to tears because I know how I've been and I know how discouraged I was. And I love the fact that he doesn't use that against us. And it also states that in your need, God is immediately there not putting you on hold, not like, oh, now you want to come back to me because you're going through something, because you want something, because you need something. No, God is like, hey, I'm here. I am here for you. And something that I used to do was make decisions without talking to him. And I found that when I did that, I don't, it wasn't really the best decisions. So I told him, I'm like, Lord, anything that I'm doing moving forward, I really want to talk to you about it. I really want you to be involved. I really want you to guide me, to give me discernment, to give me a sign, give me a message to let me know that going into business with this person is right. Being in this relationship is right. Getting this home is right. Accepting this promotion is right. Let me know. Let me know. Talk to me because I know I'm not here for me. I know that I know that for all of us, God puts us on earth because we have a job to do for him, (laughs) right? He's like, hey, I'm putting you here because I need you to go to work. And it's like, okay, Lord. So I recently shared with you guys that I went to the Poconos and when I was leaving the Poconos, I was reading my devotional and it was talking about comparing. And I was really moved by this particular devotional. So I already had it in my heart that once I got in my car, I just want to talk to God. But because it was like a two and a half hour ride, I figured, okay, I'll listen to my music, whatever, whatever, and then talk to God. And unexpectedly, I was talking to God for practically the entire car ride. I had no desire to talk to anybody on the phone. I had no desire to respond to voice notes. I had no desire to listen to music. I had no desire to plan. I felt like God wanted me to reserve this time for him. Being an organized person, I will make plans with people, you know, okay, Tuesday at this time, we have a phone call here. We have this here. We have that, you know, that there. And as an adult, that's what we got to do. Like we have a lot going on and it's like, I need to reserve time for God. And I felt like that car ride, he was like, no, you're going to talk to me. And in that car ride, I was just feeling like I'm not giving every area of my life attention Lord, help me. I don't like the way I feel about this. I don't like the way I feel about that, but I'm very grateful for this. And I'm, I see that you're moving with me here, but I don't feel right. I don't feel right. And as I'm driving, the, the, the drive was peaceful. There was no honking. There was no traffic. There wasn't that many cars on the road. The views of the trees was just so scenic. It was so beautiful. And I was just praying and I was feeling a little off, but then grateful that God is still here and listening. And I don't have to do anything special, but just show up as I was. And as I'm talking, I'm driving, I'm praying, I'm pausing, I'm reflecting, I'm thinking, but still no music, no nothing. And it's interesting because during that time, I didn't get any phone calls, any messages, nothing to distract me, nothing on social media, nothing. And I knew (laughs) that God did that on purpose because he's like, no, I, I need you right now. I need you right now, you know? And I know that every area in my life, for me, it's not filled the way that I want. And I feel blessed because there's so many things to be grateful for. And I think that whenever I do feel off, I run to gratitude because it reminds me, right, how amazing my life really is. The fact that I'm able to talk on this mic, the fact that you're able to listen, the fact that we are able to do what we do on a daily basis is a wonderful blessing that many people don't have. So I like to lean into that. I like to lean into the amazing things that will happen, right? As long as I continue to work with him and call on him. So being in silence and talking to him and being in the car, I felt peaceful. I felt hopeful. And I... 
I felt special. I actually like it was interesting because I felt really special to know how much he really loves me. And reading my devotionals helps me to remember that all the time that God loves us. We are so precious to him. He wants us to do well. He wants us to be positive. He wants us to have a great life. He really loves us. And sometimes it feels like that. Like Kirk Franklin has a song called Imagine Me. And he said, imagine me being free, trusting you totally. You know, like, I can't believe that you love someone like me. Like you really put me on the pedestal. Like I am a queen to you. You love me. So that really moved me. And it made me feel special. It made me feel like, wow, like, I feel bad not coming to you, but for some reason, even in that moment, that bad feeling didn't stay for long because I felt like I was being comforted. Whenever I read a devotional or a prayer that's really strong, I truly feel like God is hugging me. He's like hugging me. And I was making a joke with my friend because I'm like, why isn't it that God don't talk to us like he used to talk to them back in the day? Because, you know, it's like, well, God said this and God said that. And I'm like, why does it like I want him to talk to me like, Erica, you need to do this. But he does it in a very subtle way. And if we don't create the space for him to talk to us, how can we really hear him and have this feeling and have this urge? Like, y'all, I had the urge to come on and talk to y'all about this today. It was very, like, sharp. It was just like, no, get on the mic. And this is exactly what you're, what you're going to talk about. Now, here's the thing. I wasn't going to. I was going to. I was thinking about other topics, whatever. And it was like, no, talk about this right now. Because I was going to save it for another episode, but that's not what he wanted. I recently listened to T.D. Jakes. For those of you who do not know, T.D. Jakes is a pastor in Dallas and he preaches every Sunday. He also has a YouTube channel and I just love him. He really helped me. Him and my grief counselor, really helped me get back into God after experiencing grief from losing my dad. And I just enjoyed listening to his sermon. So he talked about how when we say, won't he do it, which is like, yes, God did it. He did it. He did it. And he said, what about when he won't? What about when he don't? Is he still God? Can you have faith when you don't get the expected outcome that you want? Or is your God really a butler? and a maid that you have in your life as long as it serves your purpose because if that's the case you're not working for God you think God works for you can I tell you guys that I watched that sermon five times that sermon is called the conception of faith if you go on YouTube he has the conception of faith part one and he also has a part two That particular sermon, I watched it five times because he is talking about the importance of having faith through everything. And when he said he's got a butler, I felt like he was grabbing me by the neck. Like, did you hear this, Erica? God is not your butler. And he's not. He's not. But we are to talk to him and ask him, for what we want, what we need. And more importantly, God, is what I'm seeking, what you're seeking for me as well? Are we aligned? And I feel like recently I've been feeling a bit confused and not like confused, like in a harsh way, but confused like, Lord, I have these feelings and ideas. I don't know what this means. Can you please help me? Because I'm trying to figure this out. And I don't know, is this you? Is this me? Am I confused? What's going on? And I feel like every time I feel confused, I'm filled with more creative ideas, creative things that I need to do. And I'm just like, what does this all mean, Lord? Like, what does it mean? So when this happens, I feel like I need to just stay connected with him because I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I'm disconnected from reading my devotionals and praying, I, that feeling It it just feels really, like, really, really bad. Like, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't feel right. It doesn't matter what's happening externally. I just don't feel right. And there's a lot of things that I want from God. There's a lot of things that I need. And it's not just external, it's internal as well. Like, having peace is something that you can't pay for. God supplies the peace because he makes everything still and calm for you to really enjoy. I want to enjoy life. I don't want nothing that's not for me. I don't want nothing that's for someone else. 
I want God to give me what's mine. And I want to be able to sustain it and grow it and love it and be peaceful in it and enjoy it. I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy the people that are in my life. And I understand the whole meaning of people are here for a reason or a season, right? I understand that now. I didn't before. I want to be in a place where, and I'm still growing. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. We're still trying to learn ourselves and learn each other. But really being specific, really being specific, because when you want something, it's not just I want a man, because you can get a man tomorrow. What type of man do you want? What characteristics does he need to have? How do you want him to make you feel? You know, what are some non-negotiables for you? Like for me, my man has to know God. Unfortunately, anybody who's an atheist or whatever, that's not somebody that's for me. He needs to know who God is, right? And I know that people develop relations with God at many different phases in their lives. So I'm I'm open to that as well. But I need you to know who God is. Because when things get tough, what are you going to do? Just sit there and look at me? Like, I need you to know who God is. And... I want to be a certain type of woman and I cannot do it without him. I feel so peaceful when I pray. I feel calm. I feel hopeful. I feel like things are going to be okay. I don't feel as stressed. My body is not as tense. I feel like, oh, okay, something good is going to happen. And I want to keep believing that. And that's why you know, dismissing certain conversations or not watching certain things on social media or listening to certain (laughs) things on Instagram or TikTok or all this discourse. When you start to infiltrate your mind with these things, you start to realize that do you even have a mindset or are you just adopting what everybody else is saying around you? Like, how do you really feel? And I don't think we get to hold on to that if we consistently are feeding ourselves garbage, right? Mentally as well. And that's why I feel like it's so important to do this podcast because I know somebody needs to hear this, that it's never too late to go back to him. It's never too late to pray. There's nothing special that you need to do. I actually read a devotional that said, you don't need to have special, beautiful words. Yes, God blesses people with different gifts and talents, but you don't have to say, you know how people pray and it's so beautiful and eloquent. Like he doesn't care about that. He just wants you to talk to him. There's nothing special you need to do, but to talk to him to pray, to be in prayer, to have faith, even when the faith is rocky, because my faith gets rocky because I want to see it. (laughs) You know, faith is believing in things that are not seen. And for me, I'm like, are you really going to do this, Lord? Because I ain't seen nothing happening. Come on. Right. But um, I want you to know that it's never too late. I tell a lot of people that it's never too late to talk to him. And even for myself, because when I'm really into the thick of it in my brain, I don't talk as much and it's never too late to talk to him, to get what you need, to have that conversation with him. And when God calls you and he wants to speak to you unexpectedly, he's going to make it. He's going to make that time because I tell you guys, my phone is usually going off the hook. And the fact that it did not for two hours, nothing, not an email, nothing, nothing came up. It was just me and God on the road. And I love that I didn't have to be in a particular setting. I didn't have to do anything special. I'm just driving. The weather was great. And it's just me and him. And whenever you feel that urge, just start. If you need help, get a devotional. I got mine from Burlington. That's in uh, in America, for those who are listening internationally. But you can order them online if that helps you. Sometimes you really don't know how to start. But I find that reading the devotionals really helps break down the Bible for me. And it's just so beautiful. The words, just everything. It's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's soft. It feels good. It feels good. It feels good. And I hope you feel good listening to this episode and I hope that it inspires you. And if it does, of course, as always, I want to hear your feedback. I want to know how you feel about this. Do you feel disconnected from God? Have you been reconnecting? What are some things that are working for you? Because, you know, this is something that we're doing together. I want us to have this dialogue, you know, for the both of us. So what's working for you? How did you get connected to God? Let me know. And know that God, as I've stated, y'all, God You can go back to him at any time because in your need, God is immediately there. He will always give you express service of love. (sighs) 
thank you, Lord, for letting me deliver this message. (laughs) I cannot wait to talk to you guys. Uh, Please be sure to subscribe, follow me on social media and save the good girl. And we will talk next week. Talk to God. He's listening.